Speaking of M1, I recently got, well, it, it arrived while I was gone. More on that later. Uh, I got that M1 uh, Mac Mini that I traded that domain for that I told you about. And uh, it arrived and all is good. So, you know, that part of it went really well. I replaced the iMac in the office with this. And I decided mainly in the interest of time because, you know, I'd just gotten back from a trip. Uh, I wanted to get this thing set up and make sure it worked. So I leveraged my uh, my time zone shift. We got back about 10 p.m. on on Thursday night, actually about 11 p.m., I guess. And so I stayed up till about three. I prepped the show, answered all the questions and then migrated to the or started the migration process to this new Mac mini. And uh, because I knew it was going to take hours for it to slurp all the data across from my clone drive. So I got that set up and then I went to sleep. Uh, I am not convinced. In fact, I am convinced that my advice to all of you would be if you are migrating from an Intel Mac to an M1 Mac that you not use migration assistant and that you set it more specifically that you set it up from scratch. And the reason is I've been going through enough of this process that I know I'm, I'm still missing things and the, uh, I'm not sure I've saved any time. And given that I know that I'm still missing things, I know that at some point I'm going to wipe this thing and start it from scratch and migrate stuff back in manually anyway. So I highly recommend that if you're going to an M1 Mac, that you just do it manually. Uh, and, and, and that way you're at least starting as close to native as you can get.